Well, hello and welcome back to another Starbelt Video Portal production. Today I'm going to show you how to add those cool gauges to your GoPro footage. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, let's take a quick peek. I'll show you a recent video that I made. It's called Rover Creek. We'll take a quick peek at it here. So you can see I've got the miles per hour gauge, kilometers per hour gauge. I've got an altimeter in Imperial and feet here one in metric, I've got this cool little compass thing, and I've got this distance traveled or, or path traveled. So how do you do this? Let's find out. The bad news is the first thing you're gonna have to do is invest in some software. Uh, there is no real easy way to do this for free, but the best way to do it is to use a program called Telemetry Overlay. So there is a free trial you can use to try it out, but you want to go to GoProTelemetryExtractor.com. Basically, you want Telemetry Overlay to do this, and you can click Download Now. If you want to buy it, it's 149 euros. Yes, euros. I was a bit skeptical paying for this, but they're really good. I had a license key right away, and it worked not just one time, but twice, because I installed it once on my MacBook Pro, and I tried it out with that but it was a bit slow so I installed it again with the same license key on my Mac Studio and the same key worked both times so really good value you can get it in three flavors you can get it for Mac OS for both the Apple Silicon and Intel which is excellent especially if you have some of the newer Macs which have Apple Silicon so you can take advantage of that it's also available for Windows and Windows 10, 11, 8, and 7 are supported. And there's even a version for Linux if you happen to be using a Linux operating system. You can start telemetry overlay. It's got this cool little icon. And the first screen that you'll see is just this flat white screen where you can load a video file. So click that load video button and then go find a raw video file from your GoPro to import. Now, here's an important note. If you pre-edit your video file in, say, Final Cut Pro, which is what I use, and export, you know, a nicely trimmed video, and then try and use telemetry overlay to slurp that up, none of your GPS telemetry data will be in there. So you really have to use the raw data file or the raw video file that you recorded. Let's take a quick peek. There's some driving footage, this will work. You'll notice my video's upside down. We had a, a suction mount for the windshield, but the way that the GoPro works and the way that the mount worked, we had to mount it upside down so that I had the leverage to be able to like tilt for the road view that I wanted. Otherwise, I was just looking at the sky. There's an easy way to correct that, and I'll show you how to do that as we go along through this tutorial. So let's open up that raw data file the first thing that'll start happening, and depending on your computer, this can take a very long time. It'll start optimizing the file. Now, if you want to do everything within telemetry overlay and you can export your video from here, go ahead and optimize your file, but you don't have to. And since I'm going to be doing my final edits with Final Cut Pro, we're just going to skip this step. So then it will process the telemetry, and now you'll see your your video here, mine's upside down. This particular driving video is five minutes, 46 seconds. You can scrub through, and since I didn't optimize it, we won't get too great a playback, but that's okay. What I wanna find here is where I took a corner. So there's a pretty good corner. I'm going to position my play header at 20 seconds here. And make sure you remember this number because later you're gonna to have to line things up. So let's say you only want a small fraction of your video to have these gauges on them. Maybe you don't want the whole thing because it can take a very long time to render. Maybe you just wanted like a TikTok video or a short YouTube short. What you can do is you can go to project and then you can find an area in the video that you want to start the video at. Then you hit this button right here, set in point, and then you can drag this over here, and I'm gonna go for a 20 second segment. So then you set your out point by clicking there. And now your video that you're working on is only gonna be this 20 second fragment instead of the whole thing. So once you've done that, you can go to telemetry. You can see I've, I've loaded the GoPro Hero Black. It was an MP4 file. You could actually add a telemetry file. There's 
a lot of compatibility here, so it doesn't have to just be GoPro. So once you've got your project sized up how you want it here, set your in and out points, you can click on gauges and you get this screen. And these gauges are populated for you automatically. If you click on a gauge, on like a gauge just on the screen, you can like move it around. It's actually quite handy that way. This one is my GPS path. This one up here is my distance traveled. And throughout the 20 seconds, looks like we're doing about 0.3 of a mile. This one I really like, it's the bearing gauge. And you can then change things about it. So I want my bearing gauge kind of large. So you can do that, you can move it around. You can really go deep into this and I'm not gonna go too deep into it for you, but you can like change sizes of things, play around with it. This one here is a G-force monitor or an accelerometer more specifically. So on vehicles, if you're accelerating or if you're braking, you'll see this, this little thing, this little red ball jump around forward and backward mostly. It can be more interesting, especially if you're like skiing or doing extreme mountain bike sports, those G-force monitors can be fun to watch. Like how many Gs did you pull through that corner? I do like to use the speedometer and I like to increase the size of it. So we're gonna make a big speedometer. And something that's really cool is you can make it imperial. So right here I have it in miles per hour, but you can also make it metric. Or you can even go nautical. If for this one, I'm gonna do miles per hour. And then I like this one too. This is the uh, altitude. So you can see you know, how much altitude difference you do throughout the video. Now this one up here, the GPS path is interesting, but I don't really want it. If you don't want a gauge, you just click this, you, you click the gauge, so or a GPS path, and then you hit this little eyeball here and it will hide that gauge. But what I want to do is I want to instead add a gauge, and this is a really cool one. I wanna show you the dynamic map gauge. Now this one's processor intensive. If you're finding that these take all night for you to export maybe leave this one off but I, I just really enjoy this and I want to show you a couple of things about it so the first thing I like to do is change the shape of it I like the shape to be round like that and then you can do a standard map which is what you see right now but the really cool thing that you can do is you can actually make a satellite map so you can kind of see maybe Google satellite, I don't know. There's some fine text down there that is whoever provided this. Another cool option is hybrid. So this will actually show you your street names and the highway name. For this particular video, I'm just gonna go satellite because I enjoy seeing that there. So right now, I'm pretty pleased with how my gauges are looking. So you go to export. I just want to have an overlay. So something with a neutral background or a black background so that I can overlay it on my footage in my video editor, which is gonna be Final Cut. So instead of exporting a finished video as MP4, I'm gonna export it as a transparent video. And for my encoder, I'm going to go with PNG video. You could use ProRes, but you'll make a massive video file. PNG is already gonna be pretty big. PNG video works really well. I don't want to include my original audio. You can pick a place where you're gonna save this. And here you can see we're just gonna be exporting between my in and out points, and it's gonna be 20 seconds long. Hit the export button. And that file already, we're gonna overwrite it. Okay, so depending on your computer, this can take a very long time. I had a MacBook Air. Uh, it was a Core i7, so four CPU cores, one GPU core. It was a pretty good laptop, a uh, 2015 model. And this particular step took hours just for a minute long video. And it was part of the reason why I decided to buy a Mac Studio, which has an incredible amount of GPU cores, 32 of them on this model. And it still takes a while to render. And I think the biggest bottleneck to the rendering is probably that hybrid uh, map display that I insist on adding. But I just think it looks cool and I have the processing ability now. Your mileage may vary if you find that it's just you're stuck at, you know, one tiny little blue bar after an hour. 
maybe take that particular gauge out, you'll find it goes faster. Another way that you can speed up render, a lot of these gauges are updating at two hertz or two times a second, and you can dial that back to once a second or once every couple of seconds. Just be aware that your gauges might jump around a bit more. They won't be as smooth, but you can get a faster export. So we're just about done here. Very exciting, the export is done. Let's open our exported file. You're very excited, you wanna take a look at it, you double click on it and QuickTime can't play it. Well, never fear. QuickTime can't play it because I think it is a MOV container containing PNG uh, image sequences, but Final Cut can read this file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close telemetry overlay Yep, and we're going to put this over here for a moment. We're going to launch Final Cut Pro. So there's my cute little Robin from some stock video I've been doing, but we're going to make a new library and we're gonna call this one Telemetry Demo. I don't know about you, but I hate having the date here. I like to always change this to footage and projects. If you import footage, it's gonna date, date stamp it for you anyway. Okay, so now that we have that set up, we can import our gauge overlay and you can see it there. Isn't that cool? You can even play it and see what's going on. That's great. So we have that piece what now you want to do is import your original footage, your raw footage from your GoPro Hero. So let's find that real quick. I think it was this one. Drag that in there. Uh, let's just clean that up a bit. I kind of like my, there we go. I like them to be confined to a single square. So let's put that away for the moment. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new project inside Telemetry Demo, and I'm gonna call that Telemetry Demo, again. <laughs> okay, make sure it's selected, so we've got Telemetry Demo down here. The first thing you wanna put down is your driving or your uh, your GoPro Hero video. Not, not this one, you're excited, but go with this one. Use this as your anchor. So put that down. The GoPro Hero 11 Black does a slightly weird output. It's 5K, it's cool. It's a 29.97 uh, progressive frames. That's fine, It you just get this little pop-up, it's okay. So we'll click okay, we're gonna be okay with that. And now the first thing we wanna do is trim this down. So our in point was at 20 seconds, if you recall. So hit the B tool to get the blade, which is now scissors instead of a razor blade. I don't know why they changed that. Maybe there were too many cutters. Okay, and then we took 20 seconds of footage. So let's go to 20 and let's blade that again. Get rid of this. I don't want my original audio, so let's detach the audio and get rid of that. And let's zoom in a bit and get to the beginning. So here's our original driving footage, but it's upside down. So the first thing I wanna do with this is I wanna flip it the right way up. So select it, go over here to the little film clip thing, and then set your rotation to 180 degrees. And that'll flip it the right way around and it won't be mirrored. Um, there's other ways of doing this with negative scaling your X, but then you'll be mirrored. If you just flip it 180 degrees, everything's on the right side. So that's pretty good. Another thing I had wanted to do is I've got all this dash and hood nonsense in my video, and I don't really want that. I just want a view of the road. So what you can do next is with that clip selected, you can hit this little box here, this tool, and then when you have it in trim mode, usually there's a little grabby box, but why isn't it there? Okay, 
it's just a little buggy, I guess, because it's the 5K footage. If you just go crop trim, then you can get this grab box. And then while you've got it in trim still, grab this little box, grab this little box, and drag them up there until you're happy with the way that it looks. We've gotten rid of most of the hood and dash artifacting. Then go to crop and it flips it again, but don't worry about it, hit done. And now it has cropped and expanded the video and our video is the right side up and I'm not seeing all my dashboard schmutz in there. Okay, now this was a bit of a dreary day. There's not a lot of color, it being winter, but I do like to color correct my clips a bit. So I'll show you a trick here, hit with the clip selected, show the color inspector, and then pull up the video scopes. And you can see here that my exposure is a bit dim, which is fine, that's better than overexposed. So hit the exposure tab on the far side, drag that up a bit until you're just clipping into the 100%. And then for the bottom part, if you want to see that come down, hit that so it's just starting to touch. And then I like to add a bit of saturation. Again, there's not a lot of color. It's easy to overdo saturation, but I find if you take your mids to there and your lows to there and leave the, the universe or the global and the shadows alone, you get a pretty nice look. So let's turn off our scopes so that we can see a better image. So there's what it looks like with my color correction and without. It's subtle, but it's a little brighter and the colors pop a little more. It's just a look that I like. All right, so once you have your video the way you like it, I really like this ice here. I, tr I wish I had filmed it with my big camera, but I didn't get there before it all melted. Oh well. So put your playhead to the beginning, grab your telemetry overlay export, which has this black background, put it on top, and voila, you now have your gauges on top of your driving video. Isn't that cool? So once you're satisfied with the way that it is, you can click here, go file, share, export file. We're gonna call it telemetry data uh, demo. Always do your keywords, even though you don't want to. And it's going to be exporting at 5K at 29.97 frames per second. It's going to be about 20 seconds long. I'm going to export at H.264. I have other options, but I like H.264 because it's universally compatible. Um, you would go with video and audio if you had, say, some audio track in here. Once you're ready, hit Next. I'm gonna save it to my sandbox, so we'll hit save. Okay, so once the export's done, QuickTime Player will open it for you, and let's take a look. Nice and crisp, the right side up, nicely colorized, love this hybrid map. You can see our altitude on the highway, which doesn't change too much because we're on a highway. You can see our distance traveled, you can see our g-forces, how fast we're going, and when we went through that corner specifically, you can kind of see how the compass moves, which is kind of neat, kind of like that. If you are curious, you can pull up the inspector and take a look at what you've got. So you can see we've got 5k, h.264, 29.97 frames per second, 123 megabits average. It's actually a pretty nice video that we made using your GoPro and telemetry overlay. Well, there you have it. That's how you add gauges to your GoPro Hero 11 Black footage or any other footage that has GPS data encoded in it using telemetry overlay and Final Cut Pro. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you have not done so already. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Peace.